When installed in the kitchen, start off by checking that the floor is level. We'll do it in all directions. You'll work from there making sure that your appliances fit and that you can utilize the full height of your kick plate. Once you've made your, your mark to the top of the carcass, draw your lines level throughout. These lines just make it a little bit easier when you start setting your unit. If you have a corner in the kitchen, it's preferable to start from the corner and move out, making sure that you pick up your level in both directions. You can start positioning all the other units. Once everything's in place, we'll start looking at joining the units together, fixing to the wall, etc. As you do this, you might have to do cutouts around plumbing points or electrical points if they fall within the cupboards and you want to be able to access them at a later point. Once you've got all the units out, you can start fixing the units together, making sure that the, the top, the front and the bottom is flush. Drill a pilot hole in one of the units. Try and make sure that these pilot holes uh, fall between the hinge holes. This allows you to conceal the screw that's joined the two carcasses together. Once you've screwed together all your units, making sure that the faces are flush, double check your level throughout again and adjust where necessary. The reason obviously why you are screwing the units together before you attach the wall is because if the walls are out of square or out of alignment, um, by fixing the unit first to the wall it makes it very difficult to align your doors and to make sure that the front face of your carcasses are level. Once we've done that, we can do pilot hole through the back rails and we're going to actually drill through into the, into the wall so that we can uh, knock our anchors in to fix the cupboards to the wall. I don't need to remind you that before drilling into the walls in your kitchen that you've checked to make sure that there's no pipes behind. You can then knock in the wall anchors to secure the cupboards to the wall. If your walls are very out, you may have to pack spaces behind this to get the units to stay flush in front. After that we can pick up a line to the top of our uh, tall cupboards if there are any, otherwise just measure up to the top of where your carcasses must be and again draw your line level throughout. You can then mark the bottom of the top board of your carcasses because that's going to help us when we have to put our wall mounting brackets on the wall. If you look at your instructions, you'll see the dimensions of the wall hanging bracket and how to space it correctly. We then mark out the positions of the carcasses and we can then mark the positions of the wall hanging brackets to secure these units. Mark the sense of all three holes and then you can drill these holes you can now position your base plate and then knock your anchors into position The wall hanging bracket is quite forgiving 
if it's slightly out of square after you fixed it, it's not a train smash, you'll still be able to adjust the unit. Just try to keep it within your lines that you don't start impacting the, the distance that the carcass can shift across. Once you have all your wall hanging brackets on, you can start positioning your units. Again here yeah, we suggest that you start in the corner if there is a corner, and it just becomes a little bit more difficult if you're trying to position once the other wall units are up. Again we're going to hang all the units first before we do any adjusting. This just helps you to make sure that everything fits like it should. When putting the unit onto the wall hanging brackets, remember to hold it slightly above the unit and then to drop it down in position to make sure that the clips, the adjustment clips at the top of the units and holds onto the bracket. Once you've got all your units up again, you may have to do some slight adjustment on the wall hanging brackets, but then you start fixing the units again together and making sure that they're flush at the top and in front. And this again will help when we're aligning the doors. Just a reminder, when you do screw into the units, try and screw in between the um, hinge holes because this will allow you to cover those screws with the actual hinge base plate when you put the hinges on. Using a hand screwdriver, adjust the wall hanging bracket so that it pulls tight up against the, the bracket and making sure that you level off the units as you go. Remember there's two adjustments on this wall hanging bracket. One to adjust up and down and one to pull tight against the wall. We can now start fitting the hinges to our doors. Try and use a straight edge. This just helps to make sure that the hinges are positioned square with each other when screwing the hinge onto the door. Another benefit of these units is that not only the draw runners are pre-drilled, but also the hinge base plates on the carcasses are pre-drilled. This helps for easy positioning when you want to hang your door. Use the pilot holes on the carcass to position the hinge base plate. Mount the rest of the doors on the units. Once the doors are on, then tackle one of the drawer units. Again, like indicated previously, the holes for these runners are pre-drilled on the units. So you, once you've got the, the item in place, if you use the pilot hole, uh, the runner will be leveled. Fixing the drawer front onto the drawer is very simple. We're going to first put the dowels into the drawer front. The cams on the drawer box itself would have been placed on the drawer box already after we built the drawer box. Just take into account the arrow on the cam needs to be pointing in the direction the dowel is coming in. You can then tighten all the cams 
This will pull the dowel tight on the front and keep the front securely fixed to the draw box. The draw can now be fitted onto the runners. When positioning it, remember to tilt the draw down and then to push the draw into position. Remember to use the instructions as far as possible. Now you can see we position the gas stay for the flap unit. The instructions will give you the exact position of the gas stay for both the door and the carcass. Fix the flat door into position. Then just clip the gas stay into position. Once all the doors are on, we can start looking at fixing the top into position. Remember the famous saying, measure it twice, cut once. Also take into account the overhang on the side and the front of the carcass before doing any trimming. Depending on how straight your walls are, you may have to scribe the back of the top to fit properly. Always move your tops into position before measuring sections that go between cupboards and other tops. If you're using a post form top, you'll have to use a top joiner. Once you've screwed the top joiner into place, you'll then have to trim off if there's any excess at the back. and then position the top. In most cases there will be a section of Formica where you need to edge the Formica. We're not going to show you how to edge the Formica in this session. But we suggest you use a contact glue and file it neatly afterwards.
don't forget to fix the top to the carcasses. We suggest doing that to the rails. Once the tops are fi fixed, we can start hanging handles. We suggest making a template for the handles. Again, work at the distance from the corner of the door. Check that the hole position on the handles is the same as the holes of the template. And again, mark those holes onto the doors and look at it before drilling. Using the template, mark the handle positions. Remember, simply by turning the template around, if it's thin enough, you can mark a left or a right hand door. Again, using the same template, find the center point between the handles, and you can use it for a horizontal handle on a drawer, for instance. Make sure it's flush on the door before marking. And then here you can see we just flip it around to do the right hand door. fix your handles in place. Don't over tighten the screws on your handles. Unless you know what you're doing, it's not advisable to use a screw gun when fixing a handle. When you're doing drawers, find the center point of the drawer. And then remember, we've, we've already indicated the center point of the handle template. And you can simply line these two up. and fix the rest of your handles. Once that's been done, you can lay your kick plates out in front of your feet, mark your leg positions, and also check the height to make sure you don't need to scribe it to fit. If the floor is level, you shouldn't need to adjust on the kick plates height. Just draw a straight line up the center point of where your legs are positioned and we're going to look at fixing the clips into place. The kick plate clips are just screwed into place and once you've fixed all of these plates onto the kick plate
can slide the clip into position. You can see the height of the clips. It ensures that the kick plate clip doesn't knock against the base of the leg. And then clip the kick plate into position. You've now completed your kitchen.